We continue our superintendent series this week. We've talked to the head of school districts all month long, and today we go to Hayes CISD. That school district had a heartbreaking year with fentanyl drug use, and it's not alone. Sally Hernandez found out why the, Supreme, the superintendent is asking lawmakers for help and more money. You're very active at the Capitol when it comes to asking lawmakers for what Hayes CISD needs. What do you need this year? We need more funding uh, to keep up with inflation. And so um, one of our top uh, priorities is, is um, funding based on enrollment uh, rather than attendance. You talked about funding and how the school districts needs more money. You've dedicated some money to um, a, a pretty aggressive campaign when it comes to fighting fentanyl use. Tell me a little bit about that. We have a video series. We have um, a social media campaign now by our students and uh, more and more districts across the state and across the nation are, are picking up on this. And so, you know, if, if nothing else, I think we're, we're doing a good job with awareness and, and uh, no doubt we're saving lives. What is the disconnect here? Because you have a school district that has school resource officers going to classes. You're showing this video that shows somebody who almost, who OD'd but didn't die. I mean, very, very aggressive things. Why, why is this happening? Well, I think when, um, I think we're doing a really good job for, for those kids that, um, that haven't tried it and that aren't already in that cycle. Um, but for the ones that are, um, w we've kind of found that um, even prior to the campaign, we had some kids that were experimenting and may, may be uh, addicted. And, and um, our campaign doesn't really uh, assist that type of student um, compared to the other. So, um, you know, I, I just think we have a long ways, way to go as far as that's concerned. We, we have some parents telling us that they've reached out to the, the substance abuse counselors and to the facilities and it's a, it's a two month wait. And um, so if, if they can't get in to get help, a lot of times students aren't mature enough or they don't have the, the coping mechanisms to, to say, you know, I can't take this even though I want to. I don't know what to do. And usually when you're, when you're uh, 15 to 18 years old, you think you're bulletproof and, and uh, that, oh, this won't happen to me and, and it's worth doing this. So they, they roll the dice and it's a, it's a gamble that sometimes they don't win. Now we just need the state legislature uh, that we spoke of earlier to come up with some treatment facilities for those that may have already um, acquired an addiction and, and, and it's beyond what we can do to support them. You know, and Erica, we, when we talk about fentanyl and speaking with these different superintendents, I got the impression that while Hayes County has had to deal with it more than any of the other ones, right. the other ones are all preparing for it, knowing that what's happened there in Hayes County could be coming to their district as well. I know. It's, it's very scary as yeah. a parent, for sure. we got to keep a close watch on those kiddos. Absolutely. We have the rest of our superintendent series, our series of interviews, all online right now at KXAN.com.